Hey, welcome back. It's Ricardo, and welcome to Battlestar Galactica Deadlock Resurrection. Resurrection is Season 2's DLC, kickoff DLC, and with that come many quality of life experiences within the game. However, in addition to that as well, we do get several good ships. So, going back on the basis of my video for Sin and Sacrifice, I thought I'd do an updated video now about the ships of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock Resurrection, including that famous Jupiter 2 Battlestar. Let's take a look. So I get straight into the blueprints and kick off with the capital ships first because they're the ships you're more likely to get access to straight off in the game. Yes, you're going to have the Jupiter 2, but we're going to talk about the Manticore Corvette straight away. A good hit and run tactic ship this is. Guns fore and aft, but it does come with a nice salvo battery of missiles, which you can then arm as you want, whether you want torpedoes or whether you want just normal guided long-range missiles. Quite cheap, very cheap i got to say, you know, only 500 fleet points that's required to do this. Tilium, 120 Tilium to build and takes two turns to build. So a nice, light, get in there sort of ship. You can use it both on the periphery of your battle groups to go in, do all your Dreadus contact, paint those targets, hit them and then zoom off whilst laying down some fire on the back from those um, rear cannons. So cannons front and back and a missile port as well, which will get your missiles out there. Too small a ship to have any squadrons involved though, but hey, you get the idea. We've got other ships for that. Taking a look at it now, you can say, yeah, you've all seen this. When you start the Battlestar Galactica deadlock game for the first time, this is only a staple ship to start learning and going through the tutorials. You know, there's the old turret on the front and on the back you've got the rear facing turrets as well so you can lash your Cylon targets from the rear as you make your hasty retreat after fading in identifying them and then getting out of dodge like this ship um, it's very underutilized in modern fleets I would say but I don't, a really good ship to go uh, and bolster your fleets up with as well because it's only 500 fleet points so moving on what's next up next we have the Berserk Carrier, starting to get into the heavier ships now. So, medium turrets all along the broadsides, nothing in the front. 650 fleet points is what's required for this ship, and you know, it's starting to get a bit more expensive on the Tillium with three turns to make it. Dreadus range of 5,000 meters, and an FTL cooldown of three turns. So, Bear that in mind if you think you make a hasty retreat. Start to get up there now with the armor, with front armor of 40. Um, so for those frontal assaults and then lashing the Cylons from either side with those medium turrets. No penalties and the advantages are the turret range. You're going with turret accuracy and squadron evade. It does have a squadron. So you can launch Vipers from this ship as well as giving them a battering from the medium turrets on the broadside, which you can see there on the screen. And you can see the quintessential Viper-shaped launch tubes on the sides as well. Now to recover your fighters, the hangar bay is located at the base of the ship as well. Do I use this in-game a lot? No, I don't, to be perfectly honest. And perhaps I should. Perhaps I'm not giving it its full due. But I think there are better ships out here than this. But it certainly does fill a gap early on in the game when perhaps many Tilium build resources, shall we call them, are a bit of an option. So here we go, that's the Berserk Carrier, but has been superseded I think by other ships as well with more heavier armament. Good thing about this is, like we mentioned, is that Viper Squadron. Now moving on we have the first staple ship that you're going to get that can launch Vipers and fire missiles. We're talking about the Adamant Frigate in Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. A staple ship all the way through the DLC. This is when you start getting your first taste of what a real capital ship that can launch Vipers can actually really do and lay down the missiles and has some light turrets on the broadsides. Nothing on the front as well. Again, used to be in the periphery of your fleet. No problems there. Get your ships launched out. Get them attacking all the Vipers, um, 
raider squadrons and then start lashing those Cylons with guided missiles as well. This is what it's all about. Now we're getting up to about 750 fleet points now and 100 tillion to build. Build time takes three turns, Dreadus range of 5,000 meters and an FTL cooldown. But now you can see you're getting the taste of what your first Battlestar ship could potentially be like. You've got the launching pods on the side um, with the Viper silhouettes. You've got the guns, the light turrets on the sides as well. A good old capital ship this. Recover your fighters in the underbelly of the ship as well. There really is, I think, no better ship in this class. I really do like the Adamant. And as a frigate goes, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It will go out and it will lash those Cylons for you. So all in all, a great design. You can see the design of the new battle stars coming into these ships even back then. Now moving on, we've got the Celesta support ship. One of these ships came into being during the um, Anabasis DLC. Now, of course, Resurrection is the fifth DLC in the Battlestar Galactica Deadlock series. The Celesta support ship is not armed, though it does have supply raptors which you can send out with missiles with plating as well to bolster up your fleet if they've had a little bit too much damage incurred by those toasters so fleet points quite low 220 tillium or 200 tillium to build three turns Dreadus range of 5,000 meters as well, but it's not armed and when you see it you can see yes, I remember seeing that from the fleet in the Ron D Moore Reimagination of Battlestar Galactica, Raptors launch from the front, do their resupply missions, and then return. Not armed, not an awful lot of armor plating on it as well. It's really going to get a good kicking if it finds itself in a fight, and you need to give it some sort of like fighter support as well, just to protect it while the Raptors go out and do their funky thing. All depends what you're doing. Of course, you get one of these in the Anabasis missions, because it's basically a survival mission. That's what Anabasis effectively is. And um, do you want to use this to supply your fleets in some of the other battles? Well, as you get up to those 8,000 command points with the more stringent commanders, you may well do. Moving on to the Ranger Cruiser now, which is effectively your missile gunboat, your long-range missile gunboat. It is quite heavily armed with heavy turrets at the front and medium turrets on the broadsides and on the bottoms but it has got two missile banks these two missile banks are fantastic for laying down heavy missile support from a long distance fleet points 10,050 fleet points armor at the front 60 with the rear of 45 and then 45 left and right top and bottom the top with 60 and the bottom with 45 too with a hull rating of 90. looking at this again it's one of the earlier ships you get the laid down long range missile support in the game you've got your turrets on the side you've got a huge missile bank those two banks of missiles for the fitting with long range missiles or fit them with torpedoes and what i want to do even fitting with nuclear warheads as well because you have that capability usually two of these will make short work with missiles against most ships and what they can't do with their missiles they will lash out with those cylons with their cannons as well like this i really do like the ranger no vipers though Moving on now, we're going directly into the Minotaur gunship. A big old heavy beast from Aerolon. Aerolon have decided that, you know, their mantra of ship design is loads of armor plating. And you can see that with the armor plating levels. You've got a hull of 105, heavy turrets, front, top, bottom with the broadside of medium turrets now it does have a penalty here with marine strength but it does have advantage of the turret range and turret accuracy 900 fleet points so a good staple no missiles no vipers or other ships to launch from the ship this is effectively just a gunboat and it does exactly what it says on the tin as well again that quintessential battlestar design with the vaulted front of the ship but you can see along its spine you've got the heavy double barreled ship um shanty ship guns and on the sides you've got those medium cannons as well underneath another battery array of guns every inch of this ship is covered with guns i do like these and i use these quite a lot in my skirmish and other battles even when playing the campaign always got a minotaur on hand 
I do like it. What a good door knocker of a, of a ship. Send two of those in, and not an awful lot of ships are going to resist it. Moving on now to the Janus Cruiser. Now this is an old ship, a heavy cruiser, but look at those missile banks. Three missile banks. You could quite actually put a really good complement of ordnance on there. Perhaps say one nuclear warhead and then two set banks of guided missiles. And you wouldn't feel cheated by what the ship can do. As for armament, medium turrets on the front and on the bottom you've got heavy turrets. Penalties, well, turret accuracy and firewall regen and marine strength. This is an old ship, as it says. The Janus Heavy Cruiser is an old Gemini ship. Plonking a, um, plonking a nuke in there in one of those missile batteries, I think, is perhaps a good way of making it a good base star destroyer. Lash it with the guns. Lash it with the guided missiles. Perhaps even torpedoes if you're going to get in close. It's got a hull rating of 95. So, you know, armaments, really, or defensive armaments with that hull rating is going to be its biggest downfall. But looking at it as well now, you know, very sort of pointed, very angular. Big engines on the back, got the guns, but the main thing about this, it's its three missile batteries. That's what makes the Janus Cruiser, in my opinion, one of the good ships to have if you're short on fleet points or you want to just fill that gap and you don't want to just use guns like, say, with a Minotaur. Janus Cruiser will lay down three banks of guided missiles and really take the wind out of any Cylons that are around. Next up is the Atlas Carrier. No missiles here. Medium turrets, top and bottom, and heavy turrets on the broad sides here. But it does have the ability to launch three banks of ships. And when we say three banks of ships, by default it comes with Vodper Mark 1s. You can upgrade those to Mark 2s. And a Raptor. Raptor, you can then bring it up to the Assault Raptor as well. Hull, quite a lot of hull on this. 135. Let's check it out. And you can see that, you know, take the pods, the flight pods, off a general Jupiter-class battle star. This is the ship you got. Um, you are going to be able to launch a lot of flight. Now, if air superiority is your thing, then this is the ship for you. The ships you're going to be able to launch will give you that air superiority. Though, even though it's well armoured, it can't really do a hell of a lot of damage. It's good for leaving at the back of the battlefield, launching your fighters, launching your raptors, a little bit of defensive capability with those guns, like I say, but you're not going to have that charging in to attack a base star. Next up, we've got the Heracles gunship. Again, a very old ship as well, you know. Um, not an awful lot of finesse, as it says. It's got heavy turrets, front, top, bottom, and then on the broad side, it's got point defense turrets as well. What are the penalties for this ship? Firewall regeneration. And let's face it, it's just a gun, the gunboat, isn't it? It's... More heavily armoured, you know, it's got a hull of 120, lots of armour on it. You're going to be able to plonk it in the middle of something and just take out fighters with the point defence and lay down some heavy fire against the Cylons with all the guns. I mean, look how long the ship is. It's a long old beast. And look where the guns are positioned on the top and the front of that particular model. Again, it's a big heavy hitter. And I find a lot of the colonial ships, they do go especially the older ones, firepower. Not so much on the missiles, firepower. Okay, yes, the Janus is the exception for this with its three bank of missile pods. This ship, however, it's all about the guns. The guns and the armor plating. And this came into being towards the end missions of Sin and Sacrifice. So that was the Heracles gunship. So that concludes what we've seen from a capital ship so far. Let's move on to what everyone's been waiting for, everybody. Indeed, the Battle Stars. The Battle Stars are where it's at. Now, the first Battle Star you're going to get is the old Artemis Battle Star. I like these, but then again, I'm a child from the 70s. You've got missiles. You've got armament. A good hull of 120. Front armor as well. You know, all that armor rating there makes it a good command ship. As it says, it's a very common command ship. By default, it comes as two squadrons of Viper Mark I, and the fleet points are knocking on the door of, as you can see at the top, 1,550. And it costs 710 Tilium to make, and a build time of four turns. Now, what's good about this? Heavy turrets, Battlestar artillery, 
Heavy turrets on the bottom, on the broadside, point defense. What are its penalties? Because it's an older ship, right? It's going to be firewall regen. What's advantages? Well, the distance and damage reduction because it's heavily plated. And we'll see that when we refer this next to the next ship up, the next battle star, which is a Minevra. Now, what do I like about this ship? I'll tell you. It's the battle star from the old 1970s. It's from the lawn green era of Adama. Now, I like this, and back in the 70s, this was the ship, this was the thing to have. If you wanted the old style Galactica, that's what you wanted. And there are many model kits out there for this as well, and you can also 3D print them. I like the design of this ship, the old design. Look at where that bank of the Battlestar battery is at the top there. Very angular, very sleek. You've got your guns at the bottom, not as heavily armoured as the new ones, granted, but you can still lay down the missiles and it can still launch your Vipers or your Raptors. So it's a good mainstay as well. And of course, point defense on the nacelles on the side, the flight pods on the side. Now the flight pods on this don't come in and out like on the Jupiter class battle stars, they are fixed. Um, again, FDL capability on this as well. Quite a quick little ship in regards to battle stars as well. And it's a good mainstay of a fleet. And how many times have you seen that on the television program, that angle there? Moving on to the next one, and this is the predecessor to the Mercury class, which for those who are a fan of the Ron Moore reimagination of Battlestar Galactica, you will know it is the Pegasus. Now, this predecessor to that doesn't have the double flight pods on either side, just single, but it does have the ability to launch two sets of guided missiles or two sets of ordnance, no matter what audience you put in there. Plus, it stocks two Viper squadrons as well, but it's not as heavily armoured as the Artemis class Battlestar. Now, I do like these. It's a Battlestar light, so to speak, but it is quite heavily armoured with the Battlestar artillery, top and bottom. You've got it on the front as well, heavy turrets on the bottom. On the rear, you've got medium turrets. Look at all that. I mean, point defence on the flight pods, on the broadsides. What's the problem with it? Well, flak damage, let's face it, and squadron evade. I like this though. A bit more expensive, but you can see it's a dark old model and it's very difficult to point to pick out the actual aspects of it. But that's just the modeling. Um, let's face it, you're there for the guns really. In future DLC, I hope we do get the Mercury class. It'd be good if Black Lab and Slytherin do take it for even more seasons past just season two. It'd be great to have a post-war one where you can have a good old reimagination of the Battlestar Galactica battles as well. Now we're seeing this as well with other games like Empire at War, where there's a huge modding community. But just looking at this model, it is bristling with guns, two missile banks, two Viper squadrons as well. And as Battlestars go, it's quicker than the old Jupiter, and it's quicker than the new Jupiter as well. Which, when we get to the Jupiter-class Battlestars, you're going to realise, well, hmm, perhaps you should bolster all your fleets up with these things. Especially for laying down firepower. Disadvantage, not as heavily armoured though. But looking at that model, what a great model. And look at those guns, bristling with armaments there. So, let's face it, we all want to talk about the Jupiter-class Battlestars, and the Jupiter-class Battlestar has been with us for quite a while. And when you look at that, in compared to the other two Battlestars we have, you can see why. Now, the original Jupiter-class Battlestar we've had in-game since the very beginning, the Galactica being the first one, and going through the Deadlock campaigns as well. What do you get with the Jupiter-class Battlestar? Well, designed by Sinan Quaid, he had put Battlestar artillery on the front, on the rear, on the top, Heavy turrets on the bottom and point defence on the flight pods. Penalties none because it's very a new design. You get the option of launching three types of fighters. Raptors, with well, this assault raptor as well. Viper 1, Viper 2, whatever you're going to launch. You've got the ability to launch three squadrons. But unlike the Minerva, you've only got one missile bank. Quite a lot of hull though, 165. It's built to survive a good pounding. And at the end of Sin and Sacrifice, and there's videos on my channel for that as well, you'll realise that when that particular Jupiter-class Battlestar, the Galactica, got stove into um, the Phoebean Sea on Caprica right at the end because it got taken out by the Cylon incursion there, it incurred an awful lot of damage. All the armour plating was stripped back. But what are the differences between this Battlestar 
and the Jupiter Mark II. This is a mainstay of the fleet and if fleet points is your thing, it comes in around about 21 and 2150 fleet points. Whereas the Jupiter Mark II, and we'll come to that in a moment, is more expensive on fleet points. You're gonna have less in your fleet, even if you've got the maximum of 8,000 fleet command points. So there you go, that's my little look at the Jupiter class Battlestar. Moving on to the Jupiter Mark II Battlestar. And as I mentioned, when the Galactica was plowed into the Phoebean Sea in Caprica, it then got recovered because the war's not going very well. Sin and Quaid has therefore then be coerced to come back and do some upgrades. What are the differences? Well, they've upgraded the armament array. And for me, this seems to be more arrays on the base, on the bottom of the Jupiter class Battlestar. They're not so spread out there. They're the same configuration as is on the top of the Jupiter Mark I. You've got an extra squadron. So two squadrons of Raptors, two squadrons of Vipers, or whatever you choose to put into that. And also you have one missile bank. Now this is a bit of a disappointment to me, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, a hull of 180 on the Mark II, and you can see all the armor has gone up at least by 20. And on the top, it's gone up by 10. And on the rear as well, it's gone up by a considerable amount. Looking at the model, you can see the configuration of the guns. Two groups of four. Um, not as heavily painted as what the original Jupiter class, and you are limited but by the colonies, uh, the articles of colonization of having one Jupiter per colony. So the maximum of Jupiter class ships you can have is 12 in your fleets. So as you can see at the base of that particular model, you've got the addition of the more Battlestar artillery batteries at the bottom. Point defense either side, still lay your flak down as with all Battlestars. And you've also got the ability to launch um, an additional squadron. That's four squadrons you can launch from a Jupiter Mark II Battlestar. My thoughts on this, little disappointed there wasn't the addition of another missile battery. This might come in future iterations of the Jupiter design, but I would have thought it would have made it a heavy hitter by having the additional squadrons, additional missile battery, and those guns. Um, might put that on the forum, actually. I don't know how it'd be met. Or perhaps I might just tip the balance of power a little bit too much. But you can see the extra squadron, a bit more armor. Is that really worth all the command points? I don't know. Like I say, I would have liked to have seen an additional missile battery. And there you go, I've completed the, my overview there now of capital ships and the battle stars. So what's next? Well, it would be rude not to talk about the squadrons, wouldn't it really? Now I have not unlocked the new squadron here, which is the Taipan, but we can take a look and it's locked and it'll be released future on in the campaign. And this is the press release that I've got. I'm not quite there yet. The good old Viper Mark I, again, the quintessential 70s Viper design. A heavy hitter, relying on armor, and damage. Now, the new Viper Mark II doesn't rely on that. It relies on the skill of the pilot. And you get a squadron size with a Mark I of 10. And if you look at the Viper Mark II, you get a squadron size of 8 with hit points of 34 and the maximum damage of 0.4, whereas you get 0.3 damage on the Mark I. You know, it's up to you. They're cheaper ships, really. You know, if you want to have air superiority, um, with hot dog pilots zipping around, then perhaps go for the Mark II. But they are generally more expensive to refit your machines with. The Mark II, more sleeker design is what we saw in the Ron Moore Im reimagination of Battlestar Galactica. And Battlestar Galactica Deadlock Resurrection continues in the same vein. Good old Vipers. For snub aircraft, the Viper, the X-Wing fighter from Star Wars, and perhaps even then the fighter from Buck Rogers as well, all from the same sort of era. Can you see the similarities? The long nose of the Viper and perhaps even the X-Wing as well. Now, moving on, we've got the Raptor. Now, we all love Raptors, and these are the Raptors from Blood and Chrome, because this is not the post-war version. This is the in-the-war Raptor. So you would have seen this in Blood and Chrome if you saw the Blood and Chrome um, TV film. That really, I think, should have become a series for the Adama era. Everyone missed a trick there, and, and I really enjoyed it. A dated design from what we've seen from the Raptors from modern-day Galactica. But then, it can fire rockets. 
It can regen firewalls. It can bolster friendly ships if they've been hacked. And you can board ships with a squad of marines as well. And go on there and make yourself a right old nuisance on the Cylons. For me, a great old ship. I do like the Raptors. But when we come on a little bit later to the Assault Raptor, you've got a question, well, is raw firepower from the Assault Raptor better than this one? I like this ship. I really do. Sweeper Squadron, well, you can see it, it, it is based on the, the Raptor design, to be fair. Um, deploys chaff and disarms mines, that sort of thing, and can put good anti-long-range missile deployments out there. Protect some of your ships. Have I used these in anger? No, not really. There are a few missions to get you au fait with them in Sin and Sacrifice. But now in Resurrection, going through some of the campaigns, you may require a sweeper squadron. I hope they've actually put it in there because this ship, and you can barely see it on the screen to be honest with you because the model's very dark, could be a mainstay instead of having an extra Raptor squadron. Now the Raptor and the Assault Raptor, what are the differences? Well, you can fire munitions, and paint targets. Now, painting the target. Fly off in your Raptor, paint a target and say, everyone fire on that. I use these a lot in Sin and Sacrifice. I intend to use them a lot as well in Resurrection. Again, a great design, but I still do prefer the original Raptor. This, a bus, got the big missile pods on either side. Now we saw that designed as well when there was the Exodus um, two-parter from Battlestar Galactica where they had the missile pods launched up on the side of the Raptors. Raptors are going into battle, not as maneuverable as the Vipers, but can still lay down some heavy firepower. So there you go, that was the Raptor squadrons and my look at the, the squadron section of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Battlestar Galactica Deadlock Resurrection will be with general release pretty soon and everyone was very excited around the new Jupiter 2 Battlestar. Yes, it's a good ship. Is it all that, though? It needed that extra missile pod. And I'll update the video as well when I get access to the Taipan, and also when I can get access to some of the other Cylon ships as well. Munitions are pretty much the same as what they have been all the way through the Deadlock campaigns and Deadlock DLC. No additions there. So if you've liked what you've seen, thanks very much for watching. I've been Ricardo, and this has been Battlestar Galactica Deadlock Resurrection, and a press release that I've had. It's due out in stores soon and also available on Steam. Well done, Black Lag and Slithering Games. See you soon.